Um, but yeah, man, I'm on. I'm just trying to rebuild everything and and stay stay on the path. Finally, I think I hope when I'm 50, I'm not going through something again. Because by then I'm just gonna be too old to want to deal with shit. You know, I'm like I'm not saying that's old. I'm just saying like you should have your shit together by the time you're 50. I think, or maybe I will. But at least I'll have these lessons learned over the last. Since 2007, When really. you said you're trying to write these down, you mean you're writing down what you're going through right now? I'm writing it down, and also because I am in the position that I'm in, right? You know, we're we're authors now, out of anything else. Like, we talked, we joked about this last night, doesn't make us artists, <laughs> but kind of does, <laughs> kinda, right? Yeah. Writing is an art. Um, but people, if people can learn from what I'm going through, and I know others have written books and done the, gone through the exact same thing, but we all have a unique way of presenting things. Maybe I turn it into a lesson. Maybe I turn it into something I read. Like I've read your book four times since it came out. I'm rereading Tim Ferriss's book again, uh, Four Hour Work Week, because that's the direction of life that I would like to go in, politics or not. Like doing it your way, but in a way that's smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. And in the army, right? We learn there's the smart way, there's the hard way, and then there's the army way. <laughs> or in the navy, I'm sure it's the same. And sometimes none of them makes sense. But you get it done. But I, you know, I want to spend more time on myself, my kids, my loved ones, my friends. And I think, and I, this sounds a little conceited and a little bit egotistical and a little bit selfish, but I've realized that getting my legs blown off, maybe I've earned the right to just do kind of what I want a little bit more than I did in the last 10 years. And I want to hang out with my friends, do something constructive for society still, but. If I want to go shoot, I want to go shoot. If I want to drive my car across America, well, then I just want to do that. And I think I've earned the right to have a little bit of flexibility in life to just throw my kids in the car and go. Well, I actually know you've earned that right. And uh, I told you that the first day I met you when, it, when you were talking yeah, about I what know. you were doing. And I, I was like, man, you're you're doing way more than I'd be doing. <laughs> you know, I'd be I'd be <laughs> spending a lot of time with my kids. But, you know, you have goals and aspirations and. And you've achieved those, you know, and you've done a great job up there, and and so that's good, you know. It's it's yeah. awesome to see. And if that changed directions, and now you can focus on, you know, taking care of your family, taking care of yourself, which yeah, have you earned it? Hell yeah, you've earned it, man. Well, I think what we always forget, and what I forgot, and I continuously have to remind myself of, is I'm the beginning and the end of everything in my world. And that sounds like a self. Uh, what do you call it? Self. Self-fulfilling prophecy? No, 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 no. Uh, self-involved, a little too self-involved. But if I'm not up and ready to go at 8 a.m., my kids don't get to school on time. And if my kids are late, their teacher's mad at them, and then that's a snowball in their life. If I'm late, they wonder where I am. If if I'm not at the office, my staff has to tell someone, hey, where's Counselor Middick? Uh, he's not here right now. Where is he? I don't know. Or they may have to make up a bullshit excuse. And even if you tell them your job is to lie for your boss, no, no, it's not. Your job is be on to work on time, Jody. Mm-hmm. So self care and self help and all that stuff is and taking care of yourself is the beginning of taking care of everyone that you feel you have a duty to. Uh, yeah, and that's ultimately what I want to talk about here and what I want. You know, so you know when I when, when I bust your balls about getting up at three thirty in the morning, that's what Jocko does to make sure that everything in Jocko's life falls into place for those you have four kids bro yeah i don't know how you keep up with them all <laughs> i only have two and i can barely do it and and so what i'm saying when i go back to my having my legs blown off earns me the right to be a little bit selfish about what i do with my time well i'm going to be selfish and take care of myself more which i haven't for a decade well i would expand that to to really to everybody i'm gonna tell you what i mean you owe it to yourself everybody Right. Whether you've been wounded or not right wherever you are in life because the fact of what you just said you got to remember this If you don't take care of yourself You can't take care of the other people around you. right and and so you have to you have the, to take yeah. care of yourself You know my simple thing and, and my wife knows this about me like if I don't work out I'm I, I'm not a good I'm not I'm not a, I'm not the same person <laughs> right? I'm, good person. Yeah, I'm not a good person say? you know, but but really if I'm not taking care of my health then everything else kind of starts falling yeah. apart. And so, yeah, you've got to take care of yourself. And if you don't take care of yourself, then you can't take care of the people that you care about. And and so that's the duty, really. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today and what I was saying before about if you're feeling it, pull over 
and that's the thing like you can't expect anything of anyone else if you can't if if you can't show up at work on time like why should your staff and if you don't take care of yourself then then why should you expect to take care of anyone else and we all have support yeah. you know and I'm, I, I know I'm I know I'm hammering this a little too hard but dude I've I'm I'm learning a hard lesson here and I'm trying to avoid we all I think have to learn it but there's like there's you can learn it harder than others <laughs> and I think I'm learning it the really hard way because I am a public person like like a uh, private in, uh, in Canada we call him bloggins bloggins is like Smith in, in the army so if bloggins is having a rough time he doesn't have to go on the radio and tell the world he doesn't have to go on the Jocko podcast and tell the world but he has to tell somebody and that's the biggest thing. You think you think it's scary to go to a therapist who is a trained professional? Like, think of a therapist like going to the rifle range and learning from the master sniper. That's what you're doing. You're going to learn how to shoot, except it's for th- for your mind. Would you not go to the range to learn from a master sniper if you want to be a better shot? Of course you fucking would. I, I'm a master sniper, and I'd go to the range and learn from a master sniper right now. That's what a therapist or psychiatrist or psychologist or counselor, any of them are professionals in the mental game of life. Now, I'm not saying all are equal as well. If you don't like one, fire them and get a different one. But start there and start looking for the help that's available and don't put it all on yourself. And again, if you think that's embarrassing going to a stranger, which is actually pretty easy when you actually get in the room and start talking, you find you might, they might have to tell you to shut up because their hour is up. <laughs> Um, try going on the radio or the Jocko podcast or writing a book. Like, you know, I put out a lot of my warts in that book too, and I'm still learning and I've got all these resources. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, no one's too proud. No one's too tough. And I'm about done like talking, let's talk about something fun right now, bro. Like, (laughs) (laughs) no, it's all good, man. And and I think, you know, I'm, I'm, as we were talking, and I didn't, I didn't know if we were going to do a podcast or not when you came down here. I didn't know if you want to talk about any of this stuff or we we're just going to hang out. I, I appreciate this because the whole drive, I've been thinking and talking to myself and listening to other podcasts. I'm like, I needed to do this. Yeah. And really, like what you're saying is going to, it's obviously it's going to help people, especially the idea. And I'm glad you talked about this a little bit. You kind of threw it in there. But like looking at yourself in the mirror, right? Yeah. Looking at yourself in the mirror and saying to yourself, you know what? I need some fire support here. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to get it from some people. Yeah. And there's not a damn thing in the in the world wrong with that. And that's how you sort of that was the thing. That was the thing that made you go, "Okay, I need help. I'm going to go make this happen." And yeah. so, it maybe that can help some other people that aren't feeling too good right now. Go look in the mirror. Admit to yourself you got some problems. Maybe the problems are a little bit bigger than you. We've been in combat situations that were bigger than us. You have to call in fire support. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no yeah. shame in it. Go make it happen. Yeah, and uh, and take care of yourself. Take ownership. Extreme ownership. I like the way you think. Huh? <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think that's a good place, man. I think that's a good place to chill.